At Innovations 2016, the Whimsical Database in its initial phase was presented as an Australian research project. Today at Innovations 2018, the Whimsical Database is being presented as a global WM registry for the patient's voice. The Whimsical Database is an innovative research par partnership with patient investigators contributing the patient's voice. The slide here shows uh, my role as a patient investigator and how it's been directly influenced by my personal life experience and by my membership of proactive WM patient groups in Australia and the United States. WM Aussies and the International Waldenstrom's Macroglobulinemia Foundation, IWMF. Uh, the, the logos for these two groups are shown on the slides on the left. As a rare cancer survivor for 15 years, I've been blessed to have seen all my six grandchildren born and grow up fast. I'm strongly motivated to assist other WM patients have long survivals like me. Ongoing research is vital so that all WM patients survive My interest in WM patient database started in 2006 when I joined the IWMF patient database team. In 2013, I became leader of WM Aussies in Australia and we agreed to establish an Australian WM database. In 2014, at the Cancer Drug Alliance two-day forum in Canberra, I met Professor Judith Trotman, the director of the Concord Cancer Centre, and Professor Claire Scott of Cartwheel Medical Database. They committed to supporting the development of an Australian WM patient database. Claire organised a feasibility study to confirm the suitability of Cartwheel for a database for WM patients. Judith then brought in Dr. Ibrahim Tahidi Esfahani to uh, specify enhancements required for the WM blood cancer database. They became the founding principal investigators of the Winsor database. The slide here shows that WM is incurable. There is bone marrow infiltration with a circulating monoclonal immunoglobulin M, IgM, paraprotein, and it is rare. This picture is of the IgM in the bone marrow cycle. So all patients have a bone marrow biopsy taken through a long needle insertion into the hip bone. This is mandatory to confirm a WM diagnosis. The incidence of WM is three per million, which is one twentieth of the Australian definition of a rare cancer, which is one, six in 100,000. The rareness of WM makes it difficult to recruit sufficient numbers required for phase three clinical trials. The aim of the Whimsical database is to develop a platform for obtaining big data in WM with ongoing recruitment and patient data entry to generate hypothesis to advance WM research, increase knowledge of presentations and treatment experience of WM patients, provide new insights into patient experience with patient reported outcomes, assist funding bodies make decisions about new therapies to fund. The benefit of a database such as Whimsical 
is that it provides researchers with an earlier and broader diagnosis and treatment outcomes. I now give my experience of the need for a, a, a patient database. 11 years ago, during my second treatment regime, it resulted in a number of uh, emergency uh, hospitalizations. I was profoundly neutropenic and my immune system was shattered, requiring long stays in an isolation ward. Fortunately, my treatment regimen was discontinued after the second of the six planned rounds. Of my WM friends who had this same treatment and completed all rounds, one subsequently died and one nearly died within a few years of treatment. None of us were in a clinical trial and our patient experience was not shared widely. Our patient's story remained in one hospital's records. Each of our records was in a virtual silo. Our de-identified experience was not available for the benefit of doctors in other hospitals. The whimsical database overcomes this major shortcoming. The importance of whimsical for WM clinicians has been specifically highlighted by leading clinicians of the consortium of the European haematologists. Whimsical data is seen as providing the real world experience of WM patients. Whimsical gives the patient voice so instrumental in forming and driving medical research. Whimsical has been initiated and driven by patients in Australia and the US. The original Australian WM clinician principal investigators are now partnered by international WM clinicians from the USA, UK, New Zealand and the Netherlands. In the US, they are from the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Centre in New York, MD Anderson in Texas, and in the UK from the University College Hospital. There are three patient investigators from the US working with me. They are the president of the International Waldenstrom's Macroglobulinemia Foundation and two other board members. Whimsical utilises the uh, uh, Royal Melbourne uh, Hospital computers. The original qu questionnaires were developed for blood uh, tumours, uh, for, for tumour cancers, and augmented with specific questions needed for uh, blood cancers. Globally, patients register, complete the online consent form, and other, enter other demographic uh, symptom pathology and treatment data. Briefly, I see time's running out. Whimsical is 30% uh, on its way to receiving the uh, big data results. Uh, 310 patients from four, 14 different countries are participating and it holds the real world data that is submitted by patients online through a computer portal uh, every uh, few months. Uh, the results have been presented widely. Forty-five percent of patients uh, have fatigue, uh, medium time from diagnosis to first treatment, 48 days in the USA, the rest of the world 114 days. 37 different first lines of treatment uh, listed, amazing. Um, the graph on the left, on the right, depicts the, the 10 most common treatments and the colours identify those treatments. Uh, very importantly, a finding that, that's been revealed, not seen before, it's been included, uh, it's been achieved by the inclusion in Whimsical of questions for patient reported outcomes. 
12% of patient symptoms are reported are consistent with a predictive value of 90% of the post-traumatic stress disorder. This indicates that patients would benefit greatly from psychological support. Whimsical Database is the first ever robust, global-scale, patient-derived registry. It's providing scientific and ethically approved portal for patients' voices globally. It's capturing new insights into patient symptoms. Finally, future directions. Addition of 30 quality of life questions is now in final user test phase. Nationally and internationally, collaborations are underway with New South Wales Pathology in the US with the Leukaemia and Lymphoma Society and the UK in the Rory Morrison Registry. Regular data analysis and feedback to patients and clinicians will be increased. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. That's what an amazing job. What an amazing effort. It's really fantastic. And for the theme of today, like how far you have to go internationally to get that big data, we need to really understand a rare cancer. So well done, I think. It's, it's exceptional. And I don't... And I'd also like to thank Andrew for being a tireless member on the Cancer Institute um, Community and Consumer Advisory Committee. You work very hard and we thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, any questions for Andrew? Is there a long-term plan to try and increase the amount of patient interaction in the Whimsical database? It's a great challenge. With 30% of uh, our way to getting big data, uh, our promotional efforts uh, uh, come in phases, and our next phase is when we uh, build in uh, a new feature into the uh, uh, database, which is the quality of life questionnaires, and we'll be world leaders in, in doing this. Patient reported outcomes are just absolutely so critically important. The ways that we do it, we use social media a lot. Um, the rollout, uh, initially the project started in Australia and, uh, and, and proved that it was, uh, that the tool was good and suitable for the purpose. And then through our international patient data uh, group, uh, the IWMF, uh, using social media, talk lists, uh, they participated. And, uh, and then we brought in uh, the uh, uh, actual, as, uh, not only the uh, uh, medical uh, principal investigators, but we also brought in further patient investigators. So we, we're constantly looking at this challenge of how do we increase our numbers and, uh, and importantly, uh, for those that are already in the uh, patient database, how do we uh, uh, motivate them to keep on updating their data and, and refreshing the, the information that's available to researchers? Does that address your issue? Yeah. 